Hope your work week is off to a good start. You're watching Arirang TV's Monday edition of COVID-19. I'm Min San Hee. In a speech marking three years in office this past Sunday, President Moon Jae-in called on members of the public to keep their guard up as Korea continues to combat the contagion given its efficient equipment and experience from its earlier response. We start now with the headlines with our Kwon Soa and Noaram. Hello. Hi. Hi. So let's start with the domestic updates. I see much attention on a recent outbreak related to a Itaewon clubber who was confirmed with COVID-19 earlier this month. Right. Uh, this as the Seoul Metropolitan Government announced today that 85 people as of 10 a.m. are now related to that single case. And that's a rise from 79 cases as of 8 a.m. and 73 cases as of 8 p.m. yesterday, which was announced at a separate government briefing earlier. And that's showing how the figure has potential to surge further. Authorities said that the next two to three days will be crucial in preventing the worst from happening, meaning it's extremely important that the thousands of people who may have had contact with the Itaewon Clubber from Gyeonggi-do province's city of Yongin cooperate with the government. And this is why the government encouraged people to self-report as among more than 5,500 people over 3,000 could not be reached so far. Seoul City has therefore offered anonymous testing as many are thought to be intentionally avoiding calls. And now due to this new outbreak, we have 35 new daily cases as of 12 a.m. this Monday. That's a similar increase as yesterday. And uh, if it hadn't been for the Itaewon case, we'd have more positive figures, which can be reflected in the death toll we're seeing because that's been at zero, uh, zero new cases for four consecutive days. Uh, meanwhile, we see that uh, 13 people are now uh, added to the people um, who are in quarantine because of that new outbreak, and uh, 22 people have fully recovered. Now, by region, we are seeing that the capital Seoul has 20 new cases, Gyeonggi-do province four, and three new cases in Incheon, meaning the metropolitan area is affected by the Itaewon case. Now, these figures that we just saw on the map are probably higher as of now, but they will be added to the official tally tomorrow. Of course. So our concerns of domestic transmissions are the reality in countries also around the world that ha are looking to or have eased their lockdown measures, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, in some places that have been assessed of having done a really great job in uh, preventing the worst from happening, there are now concerns of new outbreaks, including in the central city of um, Wuhan, the central city of uh, Wuhan in China, which was the, uh, the first epicenter of the COVID-19 virus, of course, and the city saw its first new coronavirus case in more than a month as an 89-year-old man was confirmed with the virus Saturday. China over the weekend reported the highest number of new confirmed cases since late April with 14 new infections Saturday, according to the country's National Health Commission Sunday, with 11 out of 12 domestic transmissions related to a laundry woman with no recent travel in in, uh, travel record in Shulan County in northeast China's Jilin province. Her husband, three sisters, and other family members were among the new patients. Authorities in Shulan plan to impose martial law as they raised the risk level in the country to high. Now, meanwhile, in Germany, which has been praised for its managing of the virus, especially for keeping the mortality rate far lower than neighboring EU countries, uh, it's also worried of new cluster infections following its efforts to diminish the economic impact by easing restrictions. Three slaughterhouses became some of the newest sources of transmissions, with one uh, meat processing plant in the western town of Coesfeld reporting some 180 workers confirmed with the virus. Mm. Meanwhile, in the U.S., Vice President Mike Pence has decided, decided that is, not to self-isolate himself, despite the fact that his press secretary tested positive for COVID-19. Right, uh, despite a fear that the White House uh, is not affected by the coronavirus spread, Pence does not appear to be afraid of any complications. His spokesperson said in a statement uh, Sunday, the vice president will be at the White House Monday as usual, though on a lighter schedule, stressing he has tested negative, quote, every single day. Pence's press secretary, Katie Miller, was confirmed with the virus on Friday and is known to have come in contact with Pence. Uh, meanwhile, Ivanka Trump's personal assistant tested 
positive as well as a valet who was in the same room as the president last week. Now, Donald Trump and close White House staff are to be tested daily for the virus. Now, uh, three members of the White House's coronavirus task force have entered self-quarantine. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, a key member of the task force, is in modified quarantine. And uh, with the virus even entering the U.S. top office, more than 80,000 people have died in the country, as we can see in our table. And the U.K. has now more than 219,000 uh, cases, exceeding Italy's cases. And uh, Brazil's death toll has now surpassed 11,000. And those are the global updates. All right, so thank you for that. We'll come back to you after the afternoon briefing. Yes. Meanwhile, Aram, concerns of uh, cluster infections here in Korea are no doubt casting a dark shadow over government plans to reopen schools. That's right. Uh, high school seniors were to go back to school on Wednesday. They were the first group to, uh, well, scheduled to go back to school. But parents and students alike are on edge, of course. But more than 150,000 people have signed online petitions, actually, asking the government to reschedule the school reopenings for all graders and all students. Uh, most of the signatures came from parents of younger children uh, who are not really scheduled to start until June. So the parents are still concerned, nonetheless. Now, the government says it will monitor situations before making any decision. Uh, in a post on social media, Education Minister Yoon Hae wrote that student safety remains the government's top priority. She added that her ministry is in discussions with local educational districts and schools in order to reach a decision. Now, the Education Ministry wants to hold an emergency meeting today, in fact, to discuss the matter, but it has been cancelled due to scheduling issues. But the ministry says a decision on the schools may come as soon as tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we have some strict measures for nightlife facilities here in Korea, I see. That's right. Prime Minister Chung se gyun issued a strong warning against uh, clubs and bars that do not cooperate with coronavirus testing, uh, saying strong measures could be taken. He noted that the testing rate linked to the Itaewon case, as we mentioned, remains less than half, adding that the majority of suspected infections are not traceable. At the moment, he stressed the need for rapid and massive testing in order to find out. Uh, now, according to Seoul Mayor Park won the government has so far only managed to get in touch with less than half of some 5,500 people who visited the effective, uh, effective facilities, as we heard before. Now, over the weekend, the local governments of Seoul and the surrounding Gyeonggi-do province banned all nightlife facilities from hosting large crowds, which virtually means that they're suspended uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. Also, on the domestic front, Aram, the government's handout of emergency disaster relief funds continues. What should we know? Well, online applications for credit and debit card points began today via the websites of card companies. Now, we had some 2.8 million vulnerable households already receive their cash deposits. Uh, offline applications for these card and um, debit card points will be made at community centres nationwide or at banks affiliated with card companies starting next Monday. So online today, offline next week. Now, to prevent people from applying at once and overloading servers and the system, the government will implement a five-day rotational system according to the last digit of one's birth year, just like we saw with the face mask rationing system. And the payment will be given out in the form of card points, as I said, two days after the application. The deadline to spend the money is August 31st, and the money can be spent within the regional district you live in, not another district. Uh, however, the funds cannot be spent online or at large supermarkets, department stores or entertainment facilities. And when filling out the application, beneficiaries can donate part or all of the subsidies, and those who don't apply within three months will be regarded as uh, donors. I see. And Korea is lending yet another helping hand to the U.S. Yeah, and we see with the figures that the U.S. is certainly struggling with the pandemic and Seoul has been helping the U.S. with test kits and now it is sending face masks, about 2 million to be precise, are going to America in the form of emergency assistance. This comes after a phone call between the two leaders in late March where they discuss cooperative measures to deal with COVID-19. And a U.S. cargo flight carrying the mask was set to arrive in the U.S. on Monday and the supply will be distributed to medical institutions there and Korea faced a mass shortage of its own recently but luckily uh, supplies seem to be stable now. Right, Aram, thank you for that. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We turn now to the regular afternoon briefing by the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasure Headquarters. Now, Korea's containment efforts are now facing a fresh test amid a rise in domestic transmissions related to clubs and bars in Seoul's Itaewon district. As of Monday morning, virus infections linked to Itaewon stand at at least, that is, 85 across the country. The outbreak there comes in light of a 
a 20, a man in his 20s who tested positive for the virus after visiting some bars and clubs in Itaewon during the golden holiday that included Buddha's birthday, International Workers' Day and Children's Day. Health authorities are calling, or actively that is, searching, tracing, that is, for all those who had been in the area during that time. But this task has not been easy as only around 2,400 of more than 5,500 people who were there have been reached. Now, quite a number of these people, as our Swa mentioned, are believed to have provided the false information or are evading contact. Officials are urging all those who are in Itaewon during the 24th of April and May 6th and others who believe they may have come into contact with those infected to get tested. Also this weekend, this past weekend that is, officials imposed an administrative order on all nightlife facilities and as a precaution that is against additional outbreaks. Here now is the briefing. Let us now begin our regular briefing for May 11th, Monday. As of today, midnight, we had 35 more patients and the total stands at 10,909. This includes 1,133 imported cases from overseas. And we have 22 me more people who have been fully recovered, and they account for 88.3 percent of the total, standing at a total of 9,632. And a total of 1,021 people are in quarantine, undergoing treatment. Yesterday, we had zero fatality, and however, we have one new fatality reported as of today. And as of the 10th of May, out of, of the 31st, at 35 uh, new cases, uh, uh, we have uh, three uh, of the imported cases and the rest of the 29 were, um, were the community transmission. And there are two were from Americas and one from Africa and one from UAE and one was from uh, Kuwait as well. And we had 29 community infections and all of them were related to the Itaewon Club outbreak. And as for the Itaewon uh, visitors, there were 20 people who were the visitors and nine uh, were the context of these confirmed cases and we had 29 new patients as of yesterday and after midnight of yesterday up until now we have 14 new cases and the accumulated cases relating to the Itaewon case is 86 and we are currently doing the epidemiological investigation and contact tracing and the 86 um, accumulated cases among them uh, the 20 are from uh, the uh, Seoul and Busan is one Jeju is one as well and there are also many in other districts and provinces and the uh, source of infection were the 63 of them were uh, the visitors and the contacts including the family and acquaintances were 20, 23 and also we have no, no case of tertiary infection as of yet. Starting from the 24th of April to 6th of May, the case DC highlights that the, any visitors to the Itaewon clubs are highly prone to be exposed to the COVID-19 uh, virus, so you need to contact the uh, call center at 1339 or contact a local public health center. And even if you don't have symptoms, you need to get screening testings. And we also asked the uh, local governments, uh, municipalities, and the local health, public health centers to carry out the screening uh, testings for people who have visited uh, these Itaewon clubs at the same time uh, the confirmed cases were there despite the fact that they have no symptoms. And the case DC, we have been uh, revising uh, our new guidelines and this is the eighth edition of such kind and it will be implemented starting from today. It stipulates the details of the symptoms of the COVID-19 patients who are subject to uh, the screening testings. And we only uh, limited them uh, the symptoms to respiratory uh, illnesses and fever, and uh, the rest of the symptoms were left to uh, be judged by the uh, medical uh, practitioners. And based on the clinic trials that we had so far, we included 
many other symptoms, including sore throat and so forth, including pneumonia symptoms as well. And these symptoms will be included in the targets, and they will be mandated to have uh, the diagnostic testings as well. In particular, as for families, and when the members of the same community have uh, show symptoms, uh, we have um, guided uh, the uh, the doctors to carry out uh, more aggressive uh, screening testings for these people. And as for the people who have come into contact with the imported cases, we also uh, have expanded the target of the uh, screening testings for these people as well. And and considering the uh, new outbreak uh, in the community, we have guided new uh, guidelines for the expansion of the targets who are subject to uh, the uh, screening testings. And in before, we only had uh, the symptoms, uh, we only had the um, confirmed cases to be discharged after they have no after they show no symptoms however these symptoms have been intensified uh, and they need to have no symptoms for at least seven days and before they are fully recharged uh, and in order to prevent the reactivation or the retesting of the virus we have been uh, adding the grace period in between so that we can intensify our screening um, for these people and the case DC also have um, revamped uh, the guidelines for quarantine and disinfections. And as for the UV and uh, other uh, sanitation uh, factors, we believe that these are not proven to be effective. And when they are uh, used uh, in a wrong manner, it could lead to um, other uh, side effects. And so th that is why we do not recommend them of using other alternative ways of uh, disinfection. And as for spreading the disinfectants at, uh, at in midair outside, we believe that these are not effective as well. And we we also recommended uh, people from refraining using uh, this method. And as for indoors, we advised the people to swipe and uh, clean uh, the uh, surfaces that are uh, touched frequently with the uh, Clorox that are used within uh, the households for domestic use, that is. And as for COVID-19, uh, as the virus spreads through uh, the droplets, and uh, considering the fact that these droplets could contaminate the surfaces and when one touches the surfaces with uh, one's hands it can uh, spread the virus through one's eyes nose or mouth so we have highlighted uh, the importance of uh, swiping and cleaning the multi uh, use facilities including the elevator buttons and the desks uh, the doorknobs and the switches and the uh, switches of the lights and the blind curtains uh, so it is a very important to uh, use and to uh, disinfect these areas as frequently as possible. And as we see an increase in the cluster infections among community, uh, the KCDC has following recommendations, and as for the uh, the sec uh, as for the sources of infection, we have 50% um, were related to uh, the imported cases, and 33 were uh, regarding the Taiwan case, accounting for 43%, and we have 4.3% or about seven people who are undergoing investigations for epidemiological investigation, and as for the club. We have put in place an administrative order that is uh, that recommends that all nightlife establishments sustain, suspend operations for a month starting 8 p.m. on May 8th. And uh, the regional districts, including Daegu, Incheon, and Gyeonggi, have uh, their own uh, regulations. And we also highlight the fact that these uh, establishments need to follow uh, these guidelines. And as for the administrative order that has been highlighting the importance of uh, designating a quarantine manager and writing of uh, the visitor log and the confirmation of the ID, uh, ID checks are also very important. And these need 
need to be abided by. And as for individuals, we highlight that they need to uh, follow the five basic in infection prevention rules for everyone that we have uh, rolled out earlier. And uh, the people also need to uh, refrain from visiting indoor and crowded places like nightlife venues, like clubs. If you have symptoms like fever or respiratory symptoms, you need to go to the screening clinics as soon as possible to get tested. And especially if you have family members who are infected or two or more people within your community are infected of the virus, you also need to get tested as soon as possible. And the KSDC, together with the local governments, we are trying to curb the further outbreak of the COVID-19 uh, in relation to the Itaewon Club. First, it's all about uh, identifying uh, the patients at an early age to, uh, to disconnect the chains of uh, secondary and tertiary uh, infections to lead to larger harm for the, pub, uh, for the public. And in relation to uh, the latest outbreak, uh, the outbreak has has been exposed to young generations and many of them show no symptoms and however they are all actively engaging in everyday life so it is a very uh, high, there is a high risk of further infection spread and we believe that this week is very crucial in determining the success of our quarantine uh, measures and as the Itaewon clubs they have been operated for uh, from May 5th to 6th I believe the uh, the virus has been uh, exposed during this um, period of time, and we believe that considering the incubation period, this week is a peak time for the virus to peak as well. And so if you have visited Itaewon area during the same period of time, we advise you to get the screening testings as soon as possible today or tomorrow. And regardless of symptoms, we will protect your private uh, privacy and when you conduct these uh, diagnostic testing. So please be relieved. And the virus is closely, uh, can close, uh, can uh, spread to anyone when uh, the one is uh, inside an enclosed and crowded space. And we have even heard that uh, people could not uh, be freely going to the screening cl clinics because they would be discriminated as a confirmed case. And I ask the public to help in providing uh, and giving them encouragement and pr uh, refraining from uh, discriminating or uh, giving hate hatred words to these people who are subject to the testings. Thank you very much. Right, that was our Chang Wen Gyeong, the head of KCDC, with the afternoon briefing on the COVID situation in Korea. And I have Soa in the studio. I understand, Soa, that we've just heard together that there's been a change in the number of total infections related to the Itaewon outbreak. Right, that was pretty much uh, predicted before. Now the number has risen to 86 related to that single Itaewon case. And 63 were reported to have been visitors of the clubs and bars that this uh, Yongin patient went to. And 23 were people uh, that had other ways of contact. Uh, however, so far there are no tertiary infections. And uh, to in order for that to stay that way, uh, Tong Eun Gyeong, the director of the KCDC, stressed uh, that uh, this uh, week is really crucial and that uh, people should self-report if they were in that area. In fact, people who were at, uh, in Itaewon between April 24th and May 6th uh, should try to go to screening testings today or tomorrow, even though if they do not show any symptoms of COVID-19. And also out of the 29 community infections that we had today, all were related to the Itaewon case, which means if it wasn't for that case, we would only have imported cases. Right, okay, so uh, thank you for that. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Amid mounting global requests for quarantine-related products, Korea had placed Indonesia within its priority list for humanitarian assistance. For more on the efforts between these two countries to combat COVID-19, I have Ambassador Kim chang Bom in Indonesia live on the line. Welcome, Ambassador Kim. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. Let's begin with the COVID-19 outbreak in Indonesia. What is the situation there like? And do you have separate measures of, by your embassy, that is, to deal with infections among the Korean population in Ind Indonesia? Thank you. Uh, Indonesia is still showing a steady increase of uh, new cases, uh, ranging from about uh, 300 to 400 new cases per day. Uh, the total number of uh, new cases uh, 
thus far in Indonesia is more or less about uh, 14,000 uh, altogether. Uh, it is the second largest and second highest uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, second next to Singapore. Uh, the Indonesian government is uh, projecting the transmission curve will be uh, reaching a peak uh, at the end of May this month and uh, will be uh, declining in the month of June and hopefully uh, become stabilized in the month of July. And uh, for uh, our Korean nationals, uh, we do not have, luckily, any uh, confirmed cases uh, who got uh, confirmed positive up until now. And Korean embassy is uh, providing uh, real-time uh, guidelines for health and quarantine for our Korean community in Indonesia. At the same time, we have made a special arrangement together with our Korean Community Association to provide an exclusive special medical service uh, for Korean community with the collaboration of uh, private Indonesian hospitals. And also, we have secured uh, rapid test kits that was produced in Korea and imported uh, to Indonesia that might be available for those who are in need of early and speedy tests. That is good to know, Ambassador. How is Indonesia evaluating Korea's response to the pandemic? Well, the answer is very simple. It sums up Korea. Uh, this Indonesian media is uh, well covering the, uh, our very successful handling of COVID-19. And more or less, I think this our strategy, especially three T's, uh, test, trace, and treatment, are being regarded as a model policy initiative that would be uh, hopefully copied in Indonesia uh, by the Indonesian policymakers. And I was often asked by uh, Indonesian friends how Korea has effectively uh, flattened the curve of transmission without any lockdown of cities or areas. I think this Indonesia is still struggling uh, to uh, curb the spread of uh, coronavirus outbreak. But in case of Korea, which is quite proud to be uh, said that we are really being regarded as the success model for uh, handling this coronavirus outbreak. As I mentioned earlier, Ambassador Kim, Korea placed Indonesia on its priority list for quarantine supplies and sent shipments to the country from the onset of the virus. Right. Do tell us why. Yes, from the beginning, this uh, Korean government has designated Indonesia as a priority country in emergency humanitarian assistance in handling this uh, COVID-19. Why? Uh, the answer is very simple. This, uh, Indonesia and Korea are now enjoying so-called special strategic partnership, which is the one and only within 10 member uh, ASEAN uh, regional body. Uh, Indonesia has been uh, serving as the leading country of ASEAN. Also, Korea is viewing Indonesia as the key and indispensable partner. Uh, in addition to that, we have about 2,200 Korean companies in operation in Indonesia. At the same time, we have more than 25,000 Koreans uh, residing in Indonesia. So these whole uh, very complex and close uh, kind of the web of partnership that has been uh, the reason why we have designated uh, Indonesia as a key priority country for our assistance. And I suppose that's why the help is not simply coming from the government here, but also from uh, firms, Korean firms that is operating right. in Indonesia. What has the reaction been to this uh, helping hand in Indonesia? Well, there's uh, uh, in addition to the government to government uh, collaboration, uh, a number of Korean uh, business uh, companies have uh, donated, uh, for example, uh, real time PCR test kits and personal protective gears and other medical supplies. But uh, the reaction from uh, the government and also from the uh, people on the street are enormously welcoming. And also that is really uh, showcasing free, uh, this real close and genuine friendship between the two countries and also uh, between the two people. Uh, actually, this uh, partnership is really uh, shining in these difficult times. Ambassador Kim, I understand that Korea and Indonesia have set up comprehensive efforts to fight the pandemic. Please tell us a bit more about that. Well, there is one uh, example case that we have really uh, 
succeeded in uh, forming the special uh, formula, which is actually a production and supply of personal protective equipment. It's kind of surgical gowns and personal protective gears. Uh, there are quite a number of Korean garment factories who are capable of producing uh, those uh, personal protective gears with the supply of raw materials coming from Korea. So uh, we, both the Indonesia and Korean government, have shared the same dire and urgent needs to secure personal protective gears for both uh, frontline medical and uh, health workers in both countries. So with the additional supply of raw materials from Korea, Korea those garment factories in Indonesia have managed to produce more personal protective equipments that are made available for both Indonesian and Korean needs. I think that has been really well touted uh, by the Indonesian government uh, as a successful model of bilateral collaboration between the two countries in handling and tackling this uh, coronavirus. I see. Ambassador, one final question before I let you go. What efforts are necessary to forge closer bilateral ties between these two countries in light of their special strategic alliance? Well, this, uh, uh, our uh, collaboration is uh, now uh, very much focused on near-term measures like uh, sharing information, knowledge and know-how, and also assisting Indonesia's uh, initial efforts uh, to respond to this uh, COVID-19. But in the midterm, I think that uh, we have to uh, think beyond this uh, near-term uh, measures to tackle this COVID-19. Uh, first of all, this, uh, we have to secure uninterrupted flow of essential business travels and also to ensure smooth operation of both uh, business communities in Indonesia and Korea for uh, fulfilling the needs from medical and health sectors. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we have signed, uh, actually concluded the final uh, negotiation of so-called Indonesia-Korea Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, which is a broader version of FTA, Free Trade Agreement. And that is uh, now under domestic procedures to, uh, in waiting for the ratification of both uh, national assemblies in Indonesia and Korea. So hopefully we could uh, speed up uh, the whole process so that uh, the IK, Indonesia-Korea uh, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement will be taken into effect uh, as early as sometime uh, in the month of January 2021. So that will be uh, giving another boosting effect upon both economies to exit from this tunnel. All right, Ambassador Kim chang Bom in Indonesia, thank you for your time and your thoughts. You're welcome. Thank you. Corona19 슬기롭게 미래를 준비해 나가야 합니다. Right, on May 6, Korea eased its social distancing campaign to adopt what is being referred to as the daily life quarantine guidelines aimed at navigating a new normal in light of the pandemic worldwide. For more on what to expect, we have Professor Hwang Myung-jin from Korea University. Welcome, Professor Hwang. Thanks for having me. And I have Professor Oza Aihan from Hanyang University. Good to see you, Thank Professor. You. Professor Hwang, for the sake of our viewers, perhaps we could start with the definition for the phrase new normal. Wow, that's... That's kind of a tough question. The new normal refer, maybe is referring to the new standard of our, our culture, the way we expect ourselves to think, behave. And uh, while we are fighting against uh, the uh, COVID-19 situations, 
we have built up the, you know, something very new, which is un strange uh, on ourselves. For example, uh, we keep up distance from each other and we're eating, working, and maybe commuting, uh, work and home. And, uh, and uh, which may have to be the new culture standard of our society. Itaewon Club uh, the situation uh, shows how important it is to keep people, you know, new, new standard. What might be some of the key components in the new normal? Well, uh, it will bring about enormous change in the various uh, aspects in our society, in education, more of the distance learning using internet, mobile instrument become available to students in all level of education. Work has to be done in different ways, uh, such as home office, video conferencing, and maybe uh, part-time contract-based work is more uh, widely spread, uh, so on. Uh, people can secure more time for themselves and their, for their families. Uh, they will change the personal and the life styles, uh, like uh, privacy, self-determination, and autonomy are a few of key word in uh, new culture and new standard. I see, and we'll get back to that in a minute after I speak and ask Professor Ayan about the situation in Turkey. I understand the country is looking to ease its lockdown measures this week. How has Turkey been affected by the pandemic, Professor Ayan? Yeah, the first corona uh, case was confirmed in Turkey uh, 11th March, uh, maybe one month later than Korea, started later, but increased very rapidly in Turkey. Uh, just four days later, 15 of March, the first death uh, due to the COVID-19 was occurred in Turkey. And two weeks later, uh, 1st of April, Corona had spread all over Turkey. It was started late, but uh, spread very fast in Turkey. And curve few uh, in Turkey for 30 cities. There are 81 cities in Turkey, but most crowded 30 cities. Uh, there were some limitations to exit and enter and entry and exit limitations for 30 cities. And the ages less than t t under 20 ages and over 65 ages, old people, was stayed uh, for two months indoor. And also there are some uh, limitations in Turkey and Turkish health system and hospitals are very good and new technology they were using. So Turkey was successful to decrease the increasing rate, not stopped. But if you look at the numbers now, uh, top 10 countries in the world, the numbers, more than 130 cases. But the active cases are decreasing every day. Nowadays it's 42,000, I think, the yesterday numbers. Uh, the, there are some differences between Korea and t Turkey. If we compare the cultural differences, uh, Turkish has uh, no self-culture, but Korea has self-culture. For example, the coffee shops uh, in t Korea, uh, you just go and order and take your coffees. But in Turkey, coffee shops and tea shops, uh, you just stay at your table. Waiters came take order and uh, bring your coffees. So during this uh, period, uh, so many uh, waiters uh, lost their jobs. In Korea, uh, maybe the uh, coffee uh, uh, owners affected, but in Turkey, low income waiters lost their jobs. Also. I see. So the takeout culture is not that common there? Yeah, right. Yeah, I right. see. Okay. Uh, Professor Huang, Korea has adopted uh, for its part the so called daily life quarantine measures now. Hmm. What changes can, can we expect in our mechanism of society, so to speak? Well, keeping up the distance from each other is very used to be very strange, you know, on us. To, uh, but we have to, uh, you know, during the COVID-19 situation, a lot to prevent the contagion of disease. So social distancing, however, is not an accurate term as a sociologist. Uh, uh, let me bring in this issue. Uh, this term terminology is uh, invented, coined by uh, C. Wright Mill, uh, referring to rich people's social network through the marriage and kinship management. And uh, so well, physical distancing and social solidarity is uh, more appropriate to use. I would recommend a strong boundary system as a replacement for it. But anyway, the, we have learned a safer and healthier way of living from this corona situation, which will remain the standard in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's take a look at this video first. As is the case in quite a few countries, COVID-19 has altered the learning environment across the world. In this next video, we take a look at uh, efforts by an international school here to offer its students an educational and effective educational experience online.
The sounds of children playing and laughing in the schoolyard have been replaced by an eerie silence. It's very quiet here at the school these days because um, of the coronavirus situation. Um, our students have been home since late February, and uh, since that time, we've been conducting um, distance learning. With virtual classes now in session amid the COVID-19 pandemic, many changes have taken place in schools across Korea. Even band practices are being held online. So how are band members keeping in coordination with one another virtually? This is a video of my high school wind ensemble where my students recorded at their homes and sent those videos to me. Um, and then I put them together with the music in various arrangements in order to make the song highlight and spotlight all of our students. I think they were very proud to get to hear themselves, especially since they only recorded their part, so they didn't get to hear everybody else. Um, we, we worked so well together, and then to finally get to hear the final product, they were so proud. Students and teachers alike are managing the best they can under the given circumstances while looking forward to the day they can finally get together physically on campus. Library operations have also undergone drastic changes due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We came up with the idea to do the drive-through program where parents and students can fill out a Google form uh, that's available on our website and then we'll deliver the books to the station near the school gate. And they can either request specific titles that they find on our library catalog or they can ask me for recommendations as well. So far we've checked out 1,101 books since the program started and more than 70 families have used it many multiple times. Books that have been returned can only be put back on the shelf after a two-week isolation period. People have been really excited about the program. Actually, it's been really wonderful to hear some of their feedback. Uh, every day I meet with students for online live classes, and often the kids will hold up the books that they checked out from the library and show me that they're reading them at home. And it's really great to see how excited they are to actually hold a physical book from school. An air of silence has fallen over the school with even the passage of time seemingly at a standstill. Teachers and students are longing for the day when they can finally reunite in school and return to a semblance of normality in their lives. I miss you and I cheer you on for a happy summer and I look forward to getting to see your faces in the fall. I love you and I miss you and hope to see you soon. When we come back to school, we'd much rather have you here and seeing your bright and cheer cheery faces. So get back here soon. Mwah. We love you and miss you. Spring has arrived and warmer temperatures along with it. But schools around the country remain as cold and desolate as ever in the absence of children. We all look forward to the day when schools nationwide will be filled with the sounds of children laughing once again. Professor Huang, has there been a change in perception of virtual classes in light of their active uh, engagement in, because of the pandemic? Most, so many schools are choosing to do this, including uh, Seoul International School. I'm going to start with my own experiences so far. Uh, the traditional class, classroom is sealed. You know, it's only an interaction between professor and teachers and students. And outside people never uh, have a chance to see how good or bad they are. The thing is that if we, uh, since we uh, started the internet or cyber remote classes, our classes being revealed to our other people. I have to add more uh, 
uh, content. It's uh, maybe uh, reflecting uh, more research uh, findings. It'll give more uh, opportunity to enhance the well, advancement of my uh, lecture as well as a better education opportunity for my student. And education is a uh, common good. It's free. So everybody can share the, my lecture if that's uh, any worthy. I see. So the exposure will make you be more effective or efficient in your preparations for class then? I believe so. Professor, I, you've been here in almost 20 years, I understand, in Korea. If you were to compare the social landscape before and after the onset of COVID-19, what would you highlight? Yeah, I first came uh, in 2002 for making master's degree and PhD also I completed in Korea. Uh, yeah, before Corona, BC is before Corona, maybe we call BC. Before Corona and after Corona, if we look at the people are using 90% using masks, it's very important. And the public transportation, especially the peak hours was decreased in Korea, uh, 8 a.m. and uh, 9 a.m. or 6 p.m. It was very crowded. Uh, by the way, the Korea has very great uh, public transportation system. Uh, people even have they have own cars they uh, prefer to use public transportation because it's very fast and easy to uh, use but uh, after corona uh, people uh, prefer to use their own cars yes of course because of the spread of the yeah. disease okay professor ian and thank professor huang thank you very much for being with us today thank you well that is all the time we have for today tune in tomorrow as we explore the impact of covid 19 on u.s china ties as well as issues surrounding north korea in the meantime do reach out to us with your thoughts and inquiries on our social media accounts or our homepage arirang.com thank you for being with us